Hey, I'm Derek Kirk from Effectatron, and today I'm going to show you just a few quick tips involving max on noise and roughness maps and things like that. Now, a lot of people have seen max on noise out everywhere. I've used it a lot in my tutorials and stuff. And if you have a version of Redshift that's not 3.0 or above, you don't have max on noise. But that doesn't mean you can't use the noise that's inside of Cinema 4D. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we've got an object here. And we're going to add a max on noise. See this option here? We have this. Okay, so we have inside of max on noise, we have the noise type. We have all these noise types to choose from. We can click, drag that right into the uh, reflection roughness. And we'll instantly get that look of what that looks like uh, as applied to the roughness. So the way the roughness works is uh, values inside the noise. If you plug this into the surface, you'll see what that noise will be look like and how it's being applied to your object. You've got black values and white values and gray values. Anything that's white is going to be applied as a weight of 1. Anything that's black is going to be applied as a weight of 0 in the roughness. So you got to think about it like that. So everything in gray is in between. So the, the, where the blacks are, that's where it's going to be really shiny. Where the whites are, that's where it's going to be rough. So keep that in mind when creating these. So, okay, so that's max on noise. Really cool. You have infinite possibilities, all these controls, all that stuff. But let's say you don't have Redshift 3.0 and you only have Redshift 2. Point something. That's okay because guess what? Check this out. You go down to Utilities, go to C4D, go to C4D Shader, drag that in here. Then you're going to go up here, and you're going to go to Texture, grab that, plop it in in front of that. Go to your C4D Shader, go here over under the Shader tab, twirl that down, choose a noise. And then inside of this, it's going to open up the options of noise down here. And so let's say, what, uh, what noise do we use on this? We used Epoxo. Okay. So on this texture, inside this, inside this noise, we're going to go down here and we have the same option, Poxo. Okay, so now if we take this C40 shader, plug it into the texture map, general image, text zero, then drag that into our reflection roughness map, you'll see, as this updates, da -da -da -da, there's no difference. So now we have the option to use max on noises without having to use the max on noise. So even if you have a lower version of Redshift, you can still use noises. And if you update this inside of here, it actually will update. You don't have to change that inside of the texture and replug it in or anything. It'll live update. The only difference is with max on noise, I mean, obviously you have uh, all the details and things here, and you can choose that right here. So there's really not that big a difference, except with noise, it's just a little cleaner. It's built in. There's less options and things. It's kind of just like, okay, this is all you need to know. You can choose it right there with the texture map plugged in and the C40 shader. You have to twirl this down inside the shader. If you select noise, then you can go down here and then you can start messing with it. And so you can start messing with the, the type of noise it is. You can mess with the low clip. You can mess with the high clip and bring that down. And that's going to adjust the whites and blacks and things like that. And the brightness is going to brighten up everything. And the contrast is going to brighten up the brights and darken the blacks. So that's the difference between that. You can right click these to reset them to default, except, oh, actually the high clip did work. It used to go back to, to zero, but it's back to 100. I think it goes to zero within the max on noise, actually, if I right click that. Yeah, and high clip is default, actually one, so keep that in mind. But yeah, Cinema 4D shader, plugged into a texture, plugged into the roughness. I mean, you can use max on noise. You don't have to have this. If you've got a, a earlier version of Redshift, it's okay. You can still create all that stuff and use all that power and you can plug it in to displacements and bumps and everything. So if you want to do a displacement map, plug it in displacement, texture, texture map, output to the output, displacement, and you're going to want to definitely make sure that your object is has a redshift tag with the geometry enabled and then displacement turned on and you're going to want to make sure you have a very high poly object for this or you can use the tessellation which is like a subsurface divide but very cool basically i just want to let you know that you don't have to have redshift 3.0 to create cool uh you don't have to have max on noise to use max on noises inside of redshift okay so one of the coolest things about noises is that you can actually animate them so we could do the animation speed, we can set it to 1, we can go down here to the movement, and we can set that to say 50, and we'll set the speed to 100, let that render, it's auto saving real quick, and we'll hit play. 
and you'll start to see that that noise is actually moving. So if we put a real, we'll put a little render region up here so it can go a little faster. So you can see it's moving around, so you can use that to make some like really cool organic things without actually modeling anything. You're just using a displacement map, redshift object tag, and animating your noise. You can make some really cool uh, water or like organic blob monsters like from Stranger Things or something. And just, there you go. So really I just wanted to show off the fact that you can still use noises, and I'm not using max on noise, but I'm just using noises inside of redshift. So you can have that same thing. So if you see a tutorial, like one of mine from the introduction to Redshift on Skillshare, um, just and I'm using Max on Noise, just know you can use C40 Shader plus a texture map and use that same thing. Real quick before I forget, there's one more thing I wanted to explain about using Max on Noise and stuff like that for uh, roughness maps and things, is to keep in mind, we'll get rid of this displacement real quick, and I'll just show you. Okay, we'll see what happens here with this one. Okay. Refresh. No more displacement. There we go. Okay, so you can see our noise here. So here's the thing with this. If we go down here to our shader ball and we change the tiles here, which a real quick tip is if you right click this tile of V, go to expression, set driver, and then right click the U and expression set driven. Now when I adjust this tile, it adjusts that tile. So that's just a good way to keep things uniform. But as you notice, as I change this up to like 15, um, our noise is actually scaling. So that's a really cool way uh, that C40 Shader with textures works because textures actually scale with this. But if you had just max on noise plugged in, and max on noise plugged in here, if you like to use that instead, we'll make this a little more obvious what's going on here. We'll choose like a turbulence and we'll up the contrast and down the scale like 0.5 even smaller 0.1 there we go okay so you can really see that so now if i go in here and i up the scale to 20 you'll notice that turbine renders it doesn't actually move so there's a way you can control that and that is with a math vector uh whoops underneath math we'll go to vector vector absolute we can plug this vector absolute into our max on noise into our input coordinate scale not the scale global because we've already adjusted that but the coordinate scale and the default of that is one so if we set it to zero you'll see there's nothing there boom 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 so if we set all that to one you'll see that that changes now now still if i go in here and i start messing with this it's not going to change but because we set this as a driver we can now go in here and right click this, set this to driven. Okay, if you want to use max on noises instead of uh, C40 shader into a texture map. So now that that's driven by that, and we change this to 20, it will change the scale to 20. So now we're working. So what you need to keep in mind is that when you texture, that the way that the tile UV mapping is going to work is going to be a little better and more understandable. So the way this works is tiles is, if we set those to a higher number like five, that means it's going to tile your texture map five times around the UV. And if you set it down to 0.1, that means you're only going to use 0.1 of your texture map across the UV. So it makes sense that when it's a smaller number, your texture would be bigger because you're seeing you're using less of it to cover more space. And when they're high, your number is higher, you're using more copies of your texture to cover that space. But when you're using max on noise, it's the opposite where we have that set up so just keep that in mind with max on noise and the vector you're actually going to get smaller max on noise the smaller the number the smaller it's going to be so it kind of works as scale this way so the vector one is going to make it bigger so you can think of this as more a direct link to the scale and the other one is more of a direct link to a uv map Okay, just want to throw that in there real quick. Just want to make sure that that was clear when you plug it into another object. Uh, if you're using max on noise, it's not going to respond to UVs on its own. But if you go through the C4D shader into a texture and then into the reflection roughness or wherever, 
it will respond to the UV shader. And I also wanted to show off that little tip of setting drivers and stuff. So hopefully that clears that up and you uh, don't feel left out by not having max on noise. You can still do everything you can do with max on noise uh, without the version 3.0 in Redshift. All right, see you next time.